Unanswered Questions About 9-11, a 90-minute program originally broadcast on Japan's TV Asahi Network on September 11, 2004. <laughs> The 21st century, filled to the brim with hopes that many dreamt about. Who would have thought that it would begin with such tragedy? In the middle of a city, the most flourishing in the world, three years ago today, tragedy struck. Massive buildings of 110 floors that rose to the sky like a symbol disappeared suddenly from the face of the earth. Everyone looked up in shock at the sky over New York City. The eerie, dark cloud that rose skyward seemed to be an omen that a century of warfare was about to begin. The destruction of the World Trade Center and the attack on the Pentagon. These tragedies took the precious lives of 3,000 people. They were acts of war. America immediately began fighting back. Upon deciding that the culprits were Al-Qaeda, they attacked Afghanistan, where Al-Qaeda headquarters were located. Also, they moved into Iraq, giving the reason that it had weapons of mass destruction. Human history given birth by evil designs and failures. Truth betrays common sense. It should not be like this. How did 9-11 happen? Let's look at the movements of the day. Four planes were hijacked. The first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, left Boston Airport at 7.59 a.m. It crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center 47 minutes later. The next flight, United Airlines 175, changed its course to New York and crashed into the South Tower. The third plane, American Airlines 77, changed its course as well to head south and after low-level flying crashed into the Pentagon. Finally, United Airlines Flight 93 is headed for Washington but began rapid descent and crashed into rural Pennsylvania. All four planes moving at once would look like this. These are the 9-11 multiple terrorist incidents. Emotional telephone calls were fabrications. This is terrible. Allegedly, passengers made phone calls from the hijacked planes to the ground, saying goodbyes to their families and informing them about the details of the hijackers. Immediately after the incidents, these conversations were spread throughout the world and people shed emotional tears over them. But, now, three years after the incidents, suspicions are being aroused that these phone calls were lies. What exactly is happening? These emotional phone calls had been fabricated. On September 11th at 8.42 a.m., United Airlines Flight 93 left Newark Airport. It was proceeding on its journey at 35,000 feet. But 46 minutes after takeoff, Flight 93 was hijacked by the culprits who were on board. Two 
Tom Barnett, also on board, made his first call to his wife. Dina, we've been hijacked. A passenger has been killed. Call someone, get some help. I have to get off the line now. On the ground, news of the World Trade Center tragedy had been aired repeatedly around the world. The wife told Tom about it. America is being attacked. Maybe your plane will share the same fate. Tom informed the other passengers. On hearing this, Jeremy Glick phoned his wife Liz at home. We're definitely going to die, but we won't let the hijackers get their way. Tom also phoned his wife again. We'll all die if we do nothing. There's nothing left but to act. Several minutes after this, at 10.03 a.m., United Airlines Flight 93 crashed into rural Pennsylvania. It was announced that this was the result of the passengers having fought the hijackers. The American government praised the brave actions of the passengers and officially commended them as heroes. We have seen it in the courage of passengers who rushed terrorists to save others on the ground. Passengers like an exceptional man named Todd Beamer. Would you please help me welcome his wife, Lisa Beamer, here tonight. Bush emphasized the cowardice of terrorist action at every opportunity. What about the reactions of the Americans? They were very brave. I often fly because of my job. When something like that happens, would I have the courage to do the same? It is difficult to say. I think it's, it's very sad, but I think they were incredible. To think that they all got together and managed to do that? It's amazing! Because brave passengers phoned from the plane, Americans firmly believed the information that the hijackers were from the Middle East and that they had fatally stabbed a crew member. However, now, three years after the incidents, a rumor is quietly going around. It asks whether it is possible for a cell phone to establish connection from a plane. It wonders whether those emotional phone calls were fabricated. There are two ways to make phone calls from a plane. One is to use phones attached to the seats. The second method is with cellular phones. The origin of this rumor lies with the collect call CNN commentator Barbara Olson made to her husband. Ted Olson, her husband, is a high-ranking employee with the Department of Justice. The husband's evidence sounded unnatural. She used the phone attached to the seat. It was a collect call. A collect call is where the person being called pays. It takes time and energy to establish whether the person being called would agree to pay. Would she make a collect call when it's an emergency hijacking situation? Also, these phones take credit cards, so there was no need to make a collect call. Such an unnatural statement from a high-ranking official? He stopped talking about the matter since then. If such phone conversations actually took place, there should be tapes that recorded the contacts. We tried to obtain those tapes. However, the tapes were regarded as private, in deference to the wishes of the bereaved families, and could not be accessed. It was decided to try the credit card company, as it must have the details of those calls that were made. But all the phone call records had been erased. The company had waived the charge for the calls relating to the incident. There were no longer clues to sort out the matter of in-flight phones.
When almost ready to give up, we heard a rumor that there was an unanswered question on the use of cell phones. Cell phones were referred to in the 9-11 Commission's final report. It is not possible to connect by using cellular phone from a plane. This accusation was made on the Internet. The man who made it is Key Dudney, a professor at the University of Western Ontario. We headed for his laboratory in Canada. Professor Dudney conducts scientific investigations into suspicious matters surrounding 9-11. We decided to accompany him. In this experiment, I would like to actually use cellular phones from the upper airspace. The important point is the altitude. The professor says he would like to prove that cell phones would not work from altitudes passenger planes fly in. When Tom called his wife, it was 9.29 a.m., and the plane is thought to have been flying at an altitude of 35,000 feet. Can a cell phone be connected from such a height? The cellular phone system used in the experiment in Canada is the one used in the United States. Three cell phones, each from different telephone companies, were used. Phone calls were made to Professor Dudney's laboratory with the cell phones. At ground level, receptions are good. We decided to use a small Cessna aircraft for its maneuverability between altitudes. The experiment begins at a thousand feet. Okay, let's begin. We begin by phoning with Company A's cell phone. Will it work? Hello? Hello, I'm uh, calling cell phone A. Uh, what's up? What is happening? Trading sounds okay? Uh, you're at 1,000? Yeah, that's correct. Um, it's a little, it's a little rougher. It's a little rougher. Okay, uh, so the big girl pretty good on this end. The phone call got through, but was a little bit difficult to hear. The results were the same with the other two. Next we went up to 4,000 feet. Then... No, not on, uh, not on me. No good. B doesn't work. Company B's phone stopped working at 4,000 feet. And when the aircraft rose to 6,000 feet, Company A's phone also became useless. A, no service on B, no service on C. At 8,000 feet, none of the three cell phones worked anymore. In other words, at an altitude of 35,000 feet, cell phones would have been totally useless. Professor Dudney gives the following analysis. I do not think that the bereaved families that receive phone calls are giving false evidence. If that is so, it is true that they received those calls. But the calls were not from the plane. Not from the plane? Then where did they come from? Where did the phone calls made from the planes actually come from? Shocking new facts on 9-11 terror. The test showed that the cell phones can't operate from the plane. According to the professor, I do not think that the bereaved families that receive phone calls are giving false evidence. If that is so, it is true that they received those calls. But the calls were not from the plane. It's like magic. Something like voice synthesizing technique was used to pretend being a passenger and to phone the family. If you use voice synthesizing technique, it is easy to create anyone's voice. 
What is this voice synthesizing technique that creates voices? Is such a thing possible? Even if it were possible, where were the calls made from? Who made them? And for what reason? William Thomas, an ex-Navy person who is also a journalist, says, The phone calls were made up by the government to make the crash sound like an inspiring story. Fabrications to create an inspiring story? Are you saying that the American government has manipulated the available information? This matter is still wrapped in secrecy. It's so hard to believe. I can't believe it. In Japan, too, there are heights where connections are impossible unless the signals are relayed. But there was one spot where a female voice, probably that of a flight attendant, had been recorded. Whatever it is, Americans are good at keeping records. When they erase a phone recording from a plane, especially one that includes valuable information like hijackers being Arabs, it is impossible not to sense a design of some sort. The premise is that the cell phones cannot be connected at that height, but they say it was connected. For cell phones, it's definitely beyond range. When I was on a plane, I wanted to take pictures and switched on my cell phone. It was beyond operating range. Don't do that! Just don't do that! <laughs> the voice synthesizing technology mentioned in the clip we just saw, it exists in Japan too. We've used someone's voice to create a specimen. Please listen carefully. We've been hijacked. Hijacker has a knife. I have to go. It's Machimura. <laughs> Let's see how this works. Please come to the front. Mr. Hayashi of AI Limited help us with the voice synthesizing technique. First of all, could you describe the setup? Yes, yes. We input Takashi's voice data from recordings of his performances. We then split them apart into units of vowels and consonants, and then rearrange them so it makes sense. By combining these vowels and consonants, it is possible to create all sorts of articulation. This is made up of Takashi's voice? Yes, definitely it is. Hey, what's happening? I don't know. What are they talking about? Let's begin. Hello, Michiko. I know I haven't always been there for you, but I love you. I will come home today. What, you think that sounds like me? <laughs> Even exactly the way in which he pauses between his words. If his wife heard this, she'd really believe it was him, and she'd be really happy. <laughs> if those phone calls from the plane are recordings, for what purpose were they really made? There's no need to go that far. It's to mention the Arabs. That's right. That's it exactly. The unanswered questions of 9-11 are endless. Unraveling them, remember the words of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who created the famous Sherlock Holmes. When you have ruled out the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, is the truth.